a politician, an elected official, may be that, but may not be necessarily a leader. A doctor may be your doctor, but may not be your healer. And today, we have the luxury of time and space with one another. And yet we may only have 12 years before Mother Earth may have irreversible, and already has, but damage that we may not be able to ever counterbalance. So we pose a couple of challenges today to all of you and to all of us. When we meet again next year, identify courage, courage that is in your own work, in your colleagues, in your spheres of influence, in your creativity, of those who are not part of compartments, categories, elections, but those who are fearless and courageous because we only have a dozen years left. And that is those people who will, may lead us. Um, <clears throat> I'm a new um, part of the Lenape Center. Um, I was just brought in board um, as a co-director uh, recently. And one of the things I've been thinking about um, in that role, I mean, I'm a longtime musician and a composer, um, but I'm climate change, I'm feeling the same urgency about climate change. And for myself, one of the challenges is to, you know, what, what can I do um, as a music composer using my voice in music? But um, I started thinking about something else too. Like, um, I mean, I, I've done what I can do individually. Like I have, all the lights in my house are LED. Um, I recently installed, everything in the house is electric. So I've installed, uh, you know, solar voltaic. So I'm running my entire studio and my house off the sun. So I'm not, I'm off the grid in Wisconsin. Wisconsin uses 100% coal burning for electricity. And what the thing I noticed personally about having solar power now in my house is that I never paid attention to the electricity before. I would leave a light on or leave my computer running. And now I know if I do that, I could run out of power. I have batteries, you know, it, but I'm paying more attention to what something uses. Like if my refrigerator, how much energy is my refrigerator using? And sometimes I hear it kick in and I run into the other room and I'm looking at my panel, like how much has it gone up? And so I, I'm, much more conscious of what's going on in my own house. But I'm thinking, I want my entire, I live on an Indian reservation, I want my entire Indian reservation to go off grid. So how do we do that? You know, I'm, I'm the first solar powered building on the entire reservation. And, you, you know, and I'm thinking, what, you know, what are we waiting for? So there's a kind of an urgency there. And, and the other thing I notice is that I haven't been paying attention to it. So I'm thinking now that the, one of the ways to do that would be to sort of through immersion. It's almost like, you know how people learn languages, right? People learn Ojibwe and they want to revitalize Ojibwe. So they take classes and summer classes in Ojibwe language, but to really do it well, we, we call it immersion training. So you're learning language like Ojibwe, but you're learning math in Ojibwe. You're learning geography in Ojibwe. So everything's in Ojibwe. And I'm thinking, for me, as an artist, that's where my mind needs to go. Just like I wasn't thinking about the electricity before in my house, everything, my art projects, my musical, musical life, and I think it applies to everything. So if you're in sports, the question is, what does sports have to do with climate change? If you're cooking and, and um, and you're an architect, what does architecture 
what's the connection to climate change and to start to think about climate change as immersion in all of the different aspects that we do. Um, so I don't know, that, I mean, for me, that's like my goal is to think how, it, this is something we're living with now forever for, for the rest of our lives. It's not ever going to go away in our lifetime. So what do we do with it? And start to think, not, not to push it way over here with science or weather, or we have to create jobs first. We have to think about that first, and so we shove it way over there. But no, the, uh, the solution uh, is to bring it and put it into everything else so that we sort of are living and breathing climate change awareness and, and how do we you know, live with it all the time, more like a friend um, in our life, <laughs> like this problem of climate change. So um, I don't know. That's just my personal story as a composer and now part of this Lenape Center, which I just say is a wonderful organization. There are four uh, co-directors now, a founding uh, executive director, and then um, four of us. So we're like the fab four um, <laughs> in Lenape Center. And all of us are different, and we're um, – we have different strengths and weaknesses, and it's exciting to see what we're doing. Uh, but our goal is to bring the Lenape people back into the city. Of course, um, Manhattan was not sold for $24 worth of beads. Um, there was no sale at all. So the land was stolen, and um, we were all driven away. So we had also a Lenape, a Lenape diaspora. So one of the arts problems for us is arts and culture is to bring people back into the city, which is what we're trying to do um, and, you know, struggling to create ourselves. <laughs> and think of all these issues as well with the arts that we have going on. And um, I'm very grateful to be a part of that organization and um, I don't know, climate change. <laughs> <laughs> so I was just waiting for the music to start so we could start. <laughs> So it's a two-part challenge. <coughs> Identify courage and figure out immersion. How do we immerse ourselves and everyone else around us into it being one motion, all of it, everything that we are and everything that we do. That's our way forward. One ishi. <laughs>